Hi, so my name is Mikhail Livingston, and today I'm going to be going through a practice lesson. And um, today we're going to be talking about um, fun with colors. And I actually have a presentation for you. Let's get it. Okay, so here we go. Today we're talking about fun with colors and what that means and how everyone really has um, the ability to do that. So throughout time and across cultures, people have always played with colors. And what I say, what I mean when I say played is like, you know, have fun with, show youth and creativity. And everyone does it, including kids and adults and just people who need to relax. And it's like a form of therapy, but like also just to like clear your mind and just remind yourself that anything can have a little fun in it. And um, to show you a little bit about colors and like how we can have fun with them, um, I picked out a special book for you guys. Um, it is called the Day the Crayons Quit. And it's by Drew Daywalt. And I think you guys are really gonna enjoy it. Okay, so one day in class, Duncan went to take out his crayons and found a stack of letters with his name on them. The first one said, hey Duncan, it's me, Red Crayon. We need to talk. You make me work harder than any of your other crayons. All year long, I wear myself out coloring fire engines, apples, strawberries, and everything else that's red. I even work on holidays. I have to color all the Santas at Christmas and all the hearts on Valentine's Day. I need a rest. Your overworked friend, Red Crayon. And see here is the full picture. We can see all of the hearts and all of the stuff that Red Crayon has to draw. Okay, so next. Dear Duncan, I'm tired of being called light brown or dark tan because I am neither. I am beige and I am proud. I'm also tired of being second to Mr. Brown Graham. It's not fair that Brown gets all the bears, ponies, and puppies while the only things I get are turkey dinners, if I'm lucky, and wheat. And let's be honest, when's the last time you saw a kid that was excited about coloring wheat? Your beige friend, beige crayon. Dear Duncan, you color with me, but why? Most of the time I'm the same color as the page you are using me on, white. If you didn't have, if I didn't have a black outline, you wouldn't even know I was there. I'm not even on the rainbow. Do you only use to color snow or fill in empty space between other things. And it leaves me feeling, well, empty. We need to talk. Your empty friend, White Crayon. Hey, Duncan. I hate being used to draw the outline of things, things that are colored in by the other crayons, all of which think they're brighter than me. It's not fair. When you used to, me to draw a nice beach ball, outline then fill in the colors of the ball with all the other crayons how about a black beach ball sometime is that too much to ask your black your friend black crayon and then we have here the full picture okay dear duncan yellow crayon here i need you to tell orange crayon that i am the true color of the sun i would tell him but we are no longer speaking and I can prove I'm the color of the sun too. Last Tuesday, you used me to color in the sun in your Happy Farm coloring book. In case you've forgotten, it's on page seven. You can't miss me. I'm shining down brilliantly on the field of yellow corn. Your pal in the true color of the sun, yellow crayon. Here is the color page. All right. Dear Duncan, I see yellow crayon already talked to you, the big whiner. Anyway, you could please tell Mr. Tattletail that he is not the color of the sun. I would, but we're no longer speaking. We both know I'm clearly the color of sun because 
you used me to color the sun on both Monkey Island and Meet the Zookeeper in your Day at the Zoo coloring book. Orange, you glad I'm here? Ha, your pal, Orange Graham, in the true color of the sun. Okay, listen here, kid. You've used me once in the past year. It's because you think I'm a girl's color, isn't it? Speaking of which, please tell your little sister I said thank you for using me to color her little princess coloring book. I think she did a fabulous job on staying inside the lines. Now back to us. Could you please use me some time to color the occasional pink dinosaur or monster or cowboy? Goodness knows they could all use a splash of color. Your unused friend, Pink Crayon. Well, poor Duncan just wanted to color. And of course he wanted his crayons to be happy. And that gave him an idea. Ooh. When Duncan showed his teacher his new picture, she gave him an A for coloring. And a gold star for creativity. Here it is. So I hope we all enjoyed that. All right, next, I want to talk about one of the artists that reminded me of this coloring book, or not coloring book, sorry, um, story. And that is Loretta Bradfield. She's actually an artist that currently still draws and she actually uses melted crayons to make her artwork. Um, and she uses them to make the pieces that you see here, like this horse and the lizard up there. Now, I was wondering, have any of you ever used melted crayons to make art? Awesome, yeah, it's, it's a really popular technique and it's really fun. Maybe one day we could try it out. Okay, so the first activity I wanted to try with you guys is I gave you all these coloring sheets and I want you to actually color in your favorite color in these crayons. And it doesn't have to be a, a usual color. Like if you wanna make up your own color, you can use two colors to blend together and make your own color. And I'm actually gonna do it with you. And while I do that, I'm gonna talk about our next artist, Walsley Kaninsky. He is actually an abstract painter. And he is really old. He's actually from like the 1800s. And he also used a lot of color. And it's like how I said earlier that um, everyone, every age can, you know, play with color. And I feel like Melissa Kaminsky actually like really portrayed that. And I think he was one of the earliest people who actually used color this much in his um, artworks. And um, he was really good at it. And people, some of them thought that he was immature, but others saw how awesome his artwork was and actually thought he was a better person for it. Like they said that he brought youth back. And a lot of people think that once you grow up that, you know, you can't have fun anymore, but that's just not true. And Kaninsky really did a really good job of showing that. And I'm just finishing up my drawing here. And I'm gonna finish by writing the name of my color in the middle. And you can see my favorite color is blue. So I did that. And normally you would color in this part and this over here. Okay, and then um, your second part to the activity is a lot more simpler, but also very fun. So the color that you just all did in your coloring sheet, I want you to write a letter to, like how the crayons wrote letters to Duncan, I want you to write a letter to your favorite crayon. So for example, 
I'm going to write to the side here. Hey, blue crayon. Thank you for always being my favorite color. And you guys can work on your own and I'll finish this up. All right, so I hope everybody got a little bit down. Here's mine finished. Hey, Blue Crayon, thanks for always being my favorite color. You did so much work coloring all my oceans, eyes, and skies. Love, Professor Livingston. Awesome. Great work today, guys. I hope everybody had a lot of fun. And um, I will see you guys next time. Bye.